Uh, what was that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make sure that you and me and everybody else is on the same page. Woo, baby, you want horsepower. Yeah, me too. The problem, of course, is that horsepower costs a lot of moolah, right? Well, we put on our ideal thinking cap and we figured out what the cheapest way to get that kind of raw horsepower is. So, buckle up, actually put on your five point harness and get ready, cause we're gonna tell you the cheapest ways to get 600 horsepower in your stable. Are you ready? Cause I am, let's go. Okay, you guys, let's lay down some ground rules because first I think 600 horsepower is a good number to strive for and to put that into perspective from the first car all the way until 1992, which was probably roughly when you were born, 600 horsepower was more than any production car on planet Earth. Second, these cars aren't cheap cars. Well, actually one is, but we'll get there. These are the cheapest vehicles with that crazy horsepower number though. And we're gonna start off with something that I and probably you honestly want, because not only do I love power, but I also love practicality. The Jeep Cherokee Trackhawk. Hands down is the SUV that makes it cool to own a SUV. Because not only can the seats fold flat for some quality time, you know, to test the suspension, but it has 707 horsepower, which seven being my favorite number, it has two of them. Some people think Dodge is crazy for sticking their Hellcat engine in pretty much anything and everything, but that is exactly the kind of crazy that <laughs> I live for. And unlike most of the cars on this list, the Trackhawk is the perfect family vehicle. Plus, the Grand Cherokee regularly wins awards for how great it is. So, a light sprinkling of a massive power only makes it better. More better. And on the used market, these things go for roughly 70K. And here's one for a bargain at 68 grand. Yeah, I mean bargain. I mean, considering a Trackhawk will walk a $250,000 Lamborghini Urus, and that's for one quarter of the price. Wait, what? You 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 want to go around? You want to go around corners too? You're so picky. Well, <laughs> then get a Corvette. And by now you know the Corvette. It's the American sports car, and probably the biggest performance bargain to ever exist. Yeah, starting in 2015, the C7 Z06 made. Wait for it. Wait for it. 650 horsepower. Now, before you start, yes, technically the C6 ZR1 also made above 600 horsepower, but I think between you and me, I think the C7 is just a much better buy. Plus, it's way easier on the eyes. It's newer, arguably better in every single way, and oh yeah, it's cheaper. Go figure, it costs less to have more power. <laughs> so, how much for this piece of American insanity? Well, about 61,000 bucks. So for 61 grand, you get 650 horsepower. Or for 191 grand, you can have a Ferrari 458 from the same era, which only made a pitful 592 horsepower. Pfft, Ferrari, what were you thinking? So, I mean, which one do you think is the better value? Well, actually, both of them are great values. It's just one is much more than the other but they both fit into the ideal car strategies where I teach you how to level up with each consecutive purchase. And that's by understanding how to negotiate like a pro, following the rules of financing, and learning all the tips and tricks to own your ideal car and make money enjoying it. So if that sounds like someone like you, because that's definitely what I'm all about, go check out our free webinar about seven mistakes that everybody makes when trying to make money driving their dream car. And if it's something that you enjoy, well then consider joining the paid curriculum and joining the ideal fam. And although it may seem like it, America doesn't actually have a monopoly on budget horsepower. There is a certain German company out there that has been cranking out some serious power since they cut their chops on the rally stage. The car that did the crime is the S8 Plus. The company is Audi, not an any. And the Plus is super important because unlike the luxurious, timeless S8 Quattro, the S8 Plus has over 600 horsepower hiding under the hood. One of the best sounding V8s 
in the world, hands down. Something about Audis and V8s just really speaks to me lately. I don't know what it could be. <laughs> yeah, I love girth. Girth Brooks, our new ideal supercar for ideal cars. So if you like supercars or just fast cars or just any cars, definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new and turn on that notification bell. Because believe it or not, this land yacht has the lowest amount of horsepower on our list at 605. That's insane. And it's a German luxury car. And the number one complaint that every Corvette owner is, is that the interiors are really not that great. And they definitely have something to complain about there. But that's something that no Audi owner of an S8 Plus has ever said. What's even better is the S8 Plus started around 120,000 bucks. And thanks to the enemy of the people, but our friend, Depreciation, you can pick one up today for 55 large. And yes, I know a big, voluptuous German luxury car isn't really for everyone. Some people just want, you know, a nice, reliable pony car from one of the biggest manufacturers in the world. And that, well, can break into the 11s in the quarter mile? Yeah. Sounds good to me. Now, when you compare it with other big American companies, Ford isn't known for high power numbers, really. Nowadays, they're more known for, well, trying to turn their legacy into an electric SUV, which let us know in the comments, what do you think of the new Mach-E Mustang thingamajig? Is it the future or did they really screw up by calling it a Mustang? Anyways, I think that's because everyone knows that the Corvette, well, it's really fast. If you want excessive power, you go Dodge. But Ford never really rested on their laurels. And when the legendary Coyote engine was introduced in 2013, well, chaos ensued because the Shelby GT500 made a huge statement. It has a mind blowing 662 wild ponies. Get it? Because the Mustang is, you know, a pony. <laughs> I'm, I'm clever, right? I've been told never to do stand up comedy, so maybe I will. Now, the best news of the day that you're gonna hear is that, well, the Mustangs are always a performance bargain. Even this top of the line thoroughbred is only 54 grand on the used market. But just, just do me a favor and stay away from the crowds. Ah, uh, that never gets old. Now, if my dad ever taught me anything about the free market, like anything, the best way to force innovation is to encourage competition. And the Mustang has a legendary rival. Yes, I said legendary. If you ask me, the Camaro ZL1 is actually one of the best cars on this list. Not only does it have, are you ready for this? 650 horsepower, but unlike the Mustang, it can dominate on tracks with corners and uh, it's not attracted to crowds. Seriously, the ZL1 has a ring time of seven minutes and a half which uh, is pretty much just knocking on the door of that legendary Nissan GTR, you know, the iPhone of automobiles. And that means nothing comes close to the level of performance the Camaro offers for the price. Like, honestly, question for y'all. How would you feel if you picked up a $100,000 Nissan and something half the price snuck up and passed you on the back straight? That would hurt. And here is one for 49,000 bucks. And it fits perfectly into the ideal car strategies, which you definitely should at least watch the free webinar. And now for 50 grand, it's still, yes, a lot of money. I know, <laughs> I get it, even with using the ideal car strategies. And after watching Ideal Money, which I'll link down in the description, sometimes it's just tough to dive in and spend 50 grand on something that is uncomfortable, barely drivable on the street. So, I know you guys are asking, can we go cheaper? <laughs> yeah, of course we can. You just have to trade sweat instead of cash. Yo, just LS swap it, bro. It's cliche, right? There's a reason for that. There is no better way to make huge horsepower numbers than just to drop a high horsepower engine into a car. And nothing is easier or cheaper to build than a Chevy LS especially since you have companies like Jags and Blueprint that will just ship you a complete motor, like this 625 horsepower 427. Guess what? It only costs 15,000 bucks. And that's something that 
I can get behind. All you gotta do is start a GoFundMe page and you'll probably be there in a couple of days. I can already see it. I need a fast, cheap car. GoFundMe for a 427 big block V8. I don't know, try it, see what happens. Well, I might give you a couple bucks. And just like that, I need over 600 horsepower and it's really ready for anything. And if you're really doing a budget build, you buy GM products that already have an LS, like the Firebird I found on Facebook Marketplace. Yes, it has a blown engine, which makes it perfect if you wanna just drop a monster LS into it. And when you're done, you'll probably be in it roughly 25 grand. And that's including rebuilding or just sourcing a transmission and getting all the stuff you forgot, like wire adapters, drive shafts, and some tuning. Honestly, guys, I want to LS swap the Safari 911. <laughs> it's like Chevy builds one of the best engines in the world. Porsche builds one of the best chassis in the world. And I want them to come together like peanut butter and jelly in my garage. So should I do it? Maybe it's an investment for the channel and for our knowledge on how to LS swap something. Like I'm really on the fence on this. So if you could give me some overwhelming support by hitting the like button and commenting down below, that we should do it, well then I'll at least know that uh, I have some people fighting for the cause. And yes, we'll try to pick up sponsors, we'll document the build, and you will become a better enthusiast because of it, if we do it. So let us know. And I also promise it won't become the next car on this list, which is <laughs> truly the cheapest way to get 600 horsepower that I could come up with. And I looked down some really deep holes that I don't wanna look down again because it got ugly. And the way you do this is you buy someone else's unfinished project car. And this is the perfect option for some of those that are out there that aren't scared of taking a huge risk because you never really know what you're getting into when you buy someone else's project. Uh, ask me how I know. But there are tons of people out there that have tried things like an LS swap or build a bracket car or for whatever reason, they're just, they're just, they're just ready to move on. It's not you, it, it's me. Or it's, it's not me, it's, it's you. The project car. I can't have you in my life anymore. So, if all you care about is power, and that's it, pick up a car that they're moving on from. The best cars to look for, in my opinion, are cars built for drag racing, where 600, 700, 1,000 horsepower are pretty regular. In fact, any car that can do a sub 10 second quarter mile is probably past 600 horses. Like this monster Monza I found on Facebook Marketplace for 26,000. I don't know if I would touch that, but maybe if you were crazy enough, you would. However, I think something sicker that really illustrates my point. If you haven't wasted time on the coolest website, Racing Junk, you, my friend, are missing out because you can find things like an 800 horsepower Ford Ranger. What? Seriously? I mean, I would take that over a TRX, maybe not. No, I, I wouldn't. TRX has a warranty. But a TRX is also 100,000 bucks. And our boy Stradman just bought one. And this thing is only 20 grand. And that's, that's gotta be the cheapest complete vehicle with over 600 horsepower that's out there in this universe. If you find one cheaper, well, tell us in the comments below. And maybe we'll have to make a part two. Or maybe go for 700 horsepower. But <laughs> if I'm super honest, and this is me passing on some real advice. If you want over 600 horsepower and you want a sorted car that you can actually live with, you know, take your significant other on dates and get there reliably and get home without being on a tow truck, well, <laughs> then you know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, you do. No, you, you really do. This vehicle was, well, the second choice for the first ideal supercar. We decided to go with the Audi R8, which I have no regrets, but the Dodge SRT Hellcat, which makes 707 horsepower, which is already a completely insane number, but then when you couple it with the price, it's truly unreal. Not only is it the cheapest production car on this list, but it's only tied for the most horsepower between the Trackhawk which, well, has the exact same engine, but you can pick one of these up for 42,000 bucks. I just wanna compare it because, <laughs> god damn, McLaren 570S makes 562 horsepower, and it costs $191,000. That's 340 bucks per horsepower. The Corvette, well, about 95 bucks per pony. The Hellcat, only 
$60 per horsepower. There aren't many better things in this world that you can spend your money on than a Hellcat and then maybe race for some pink slips. I don't know, win a couple of cars. <laughs> That'll pay for itself real quick. So did you enjoy today's show? We had a ton of fun making it. And the only reason we're able to bring this awesome content to you guys is because you support us. Tell your friends about Ideal Cars because we are gonna continue to be making ideal content about cars, about money, and just the ideal lifestyle for you. And let us know which videos you'd like to see next because, well, we're always trying to make the content that you guys will watch. And guys, promise me one thing, say it with me. Keep living the ideal lifestyle.